episode of Neo Cash Radio. In the studio with you, it's JJ. In this special episode, I interview Sam Sharma, the president and co-founder of Centra. Centra is a debit card and wallet that allows users to spend cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, Dash, Ether, ERC-20 tokens, Ripple, Zcash, Monero, and Litecoin. Centra is also working on a marketplace called Seabay. Sam, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sam, can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and how you got started in all of this? Sure. Uh, I'm a fellow New Yorker, born and raised. Uh, I was always into technology when I was a little kid. One of those computer nerds just sitting on the computer, always trying to build a website. I kind of uh, strayed away from tech when I got into college, when I went to St. John's University in Queens. Was uh, focused more on finance at that time and, and getting like real real world skills and stuff under my belt. And then cryptocurrency started getting really popular and I, I jumped on just like everyone else about three years ago and was trading bitcoins and, and uh, ethereum etc and then one day I was just sitting home and I was like you know what 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 if I could just go spend my bitcoins live right now and the profits I've made and just go buy stuff with it without having to worry about withdrawing depositing etc and that's where kind of the idea manifested for Centricard. I saw that my only other uh, competitor that had something similar was a company called BitPay, but they didn't have the other fundamentals of other cryptocurrency assets, which take billions of dollars of market share in the market. And that's where kind of the idea manifested to design something that could be utilized for a, a wide array of, a range of cryptocurrencies that can be spent in real time. Excellent. So you, you have a white paper out there. I really encourage people to go and check it out uh, because it, it will describe things that aren't included in this interview. But uh, we're going to go through some of the, the three core products you talk about in the white paper, and uh, we'll just sort of step through each of those. So let's start with the card and wallet. Um, you have cards in both Visa and MasterCard, according to the white paper. Why is that? So internationally, we currently have our license with MasterCard to service international clients. Uh, domestically, we do have the Visa partnership. So we're able to issue Visa cards domestically and MasterCards internationally. We're currently working on a joint venture program for to, to do Visa as well in certain countries internationally. But currently right now, it's just available for MasterCards internationally and Visa cards here in the United States. Right. So uh, is this, have you undergone like a, how far along is your process? Are, are you in a beta phase? Are you sure. testing cards, things like that? So right now we're currently in our live beta stage, which we have members of our internal organization as well as some external, about 100, that have gotten our Central Black Founder cards recently. We're going through uh, pretty much a, a phase two of testing right now where we're just going through uh, daily transactions, testing volume, et cetera, and we've gotten really good results so far on it. Our central wallet app uh, is iOS friendly currently. We, we're currently on the on the verge of getting our Android beta ready within the next 15 to 30 days. Uh, right now, the iOS app is available through TestFlight, and we've had a pretty much a successful test rate in terms of uh, errors, in terms of uh, proof processes, and the whole flow of the the card attaching to the app. Okay. And so the the that's the critical part there. The the wallet and the card are linked together. Is that right? Yeah. So our wallets are are standard cold storage wallets. So they're actually insured by a Praetorian insurance company to for in, in case of a network hack or in case of a, a network fault where our accounts are compromised in any event, those accounts, anything that's stored in an asset is insured as well as for US customers, uh, fiat is insured as well. Okay, excellent. So uh, do I? So you can link a, a bank account to this too, or is this? Yeah. Just... So, so for our, our initial version, which will be released to the public in about two weeks, you're going to currently not have the ability to hook up a bank account and do ACHs yet. When our live uh, app actually goes out in October, November, you will you will have the ability to connect your bank account and be able to withdraw and deposit, just like a uh, like Coinbase or any of the other ex, uh, exchanges that are available. Right. So you, your your white paper mentions uh, you've acquired licenses of certain sorts in 38 U.S. states. Is that right? Yeah. So what it is is, um, and we kind of got this idea from Coinbase. I give them a lot of credit. They're they're definitely paved the road for a lot of the technical aspects of how to operate this correctly. Uh, to pretty much be able to do it in the states we operate in, as far as the the buying goes, the buying and selling of Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc. There's a requirement to have electronic money transmitting license, kind of like similar to what Western Union has and, and like I said, Coinbase has. 
that gives us the ability to be able to interact with our clients and be able to transfer their funds in and out from different states. How long have you been working on this? I mean, you're, we'll get into the token sale, but the, the company has been going on longer than, than just oh, the last yeah. we, we kept this, uh We kept this pretty much as discreet as possible when we're, when we're in our alpha stage, when we're getting everything set up with licenses, corporations, names, et cetera. Um, we do have right now a, a competitive edge on our components in terms of what we have available here in the United States. We wanted to wait before making a, a public announcement, which we did in July, about our token, about our card, et cetera. But we've been working on this for about a year and five months now in total, and we've been working diligently day and night to make sure we were able to get this product to the hands of people this year. Now, is this a self-funded company, or did you run a VC round, or, or how did that, that yeah, initial? We have uh, one private investor who's, who's actually uh, Mike Edwards. He's also our VP and co-founder. He put up a lot of the capital originally. I, I put up some capital. We have not done any venture capital uh, rounds or any seed funding rounds as of right now. Everything is self-house. As of, as of this point, we do have plans to expand our funding criteria as we're going more into this. Right. Well, it's, it's refreshing that it's uh, you know somewhat self-funded and that the team is the one that people putting in the money, the skin in the game, so to speak, before you actually go and ask for funding. So I, I just want to point that out. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of we talk about a lot of ICOs and token sales on Neocash Radio, um, but let's actually get into that token and discuss the CTR token. Sure. Uh, you, there's there's a lot of things that going on with that token. So let, let's just start with uh, wh what are the benefits of holding the CTR token? Sure. So we designed um, a token in our business model towards the end of the the schematic of setting up the Centric Card. Our original plans were not to have a token. But as the as everyone knows right now, the ICO industry is is on a, on a very good boom right now, and we want to get the ability to design something to actually add a value, opposed to just having a token that's just sitting there that's tradable. So we've designed what's called a utility token, that pretty much it gives the token an ability to interact with the core product line in everyday life. So what that pretty much means is our CTR tokens are able to be spent and withdrawn through our central card, wallet, and CBay platforms, just like any other cryptocurrency. We currently support uh, eight cryptocurrencies. That'll be one of the eight that we support in the ERC-20 category. And it gives a lot of rewards and benefits to those token holders. Currently, we have a reward system set up, it's for, and it's based on a monthly setup that token holders get 0.8% rewards of the network uh, profit generated inside of the, the terms and conditions of the token. So right. to pretty much break that down, it, it just means that the rewards percentage that we get from Visa and MasterCard through our revenue share, we actually give 0.8% of that away to token holders as part of our, our, our program to join the central tokens. Now, how is that paid out? Is that paid out in Ether or is that... That's, how is... that's paid out in Ether monthly to their central wallets. Okay. And so that's just, they don't have to go and uh, do some sort of smart contract uh call and and like for example there are tokens out there now that are paying dividends and then but you have to interact with their smart contract and whatnot you, this is just sort of automatic right, right. this is a rewards program it ha it once, once we have the actual uh wallet uh released to the public it's it needs to be stored on there for the rewards portion of it uh tokens that are holding are held in exchanges etc they're, they're going to they're be a, a different process to actually get those credits to those people in terms of a form that needs to be filled out but the okay. central tokens that are held inside of the wallet would be automatically uh, dispersed every month. All right. And then next, you mentioned CBay. So CBay rhymes with another big merchant. Uh, yeah. What are the plans with that? Well, CBay was a, an idea that originally manifested back in January. We wanted to set up a real live marketplace that accepts all varieties of cryptocurrencies. We're living in the world where, listen, cryptocurrencies are over $100 billion in market share. It's, it's something extraordinary, and we wanted to give people the advantage to take the profits that they've gotten and the cryptocurrencies that they've invested in and utilize them, just like you know government fiat. So the idea of CBay came about to give uh, merchants the ability to sell with also less of a liability from chargebacks, as well as buyers to be able to buy by using their cryptocurrencies and not having to worry about spending uh, fiat, et cetera. They could use their profits, they could use their cryptocurrencies and shop on the platform. It's a two-way channel. We're the intermediary. We make sure that the transactions go through uh, safely, securely, and that we do have a good refund policy in place. 
There's nothing that's going to be sold on our platform that does not have a refund policy. So we keep everything open so that both the event, uh, both the vendors, merchants, and also our clients are happy. Okay. And uh, so you mentioned that the wallets were insured. Is there some sort of insurance scheme that's going to be a part of the CBay as well? As of, as, as, as of right now, we're in the works of works on that. And nothing's been finalized yet. Okay. Um, so like there are a couple, you know, the, the marketplaces for, for crypto have, you know, they've had a, a very storied uh, history, if you will. And uh, so currently, like there's uh, Open Bazaar. Have you ever right. tr- seen that one? I had. Or yes. like, is it so you're you're going to move towards that direction or is it going to be more of like it's more uh, it's more in the direction of as, as part of the core system it's going to be literally it's like literally going to be oriented through Amazon and eBay style as far okay. as who's listing on there what's listed on there we plan on having over 100,000 items listed on our release we're currently working with some uh, undisclosed retailers as well as companies to um, have inventory as well as drop ship a couple of items as well and yes. that, we anticipate, hopefully, if, if everything goes as planned, we might even hit closer to the 200,000 mark of items once we release. Well, wow, that's pretty impressive. All right. So you, uh, we're going to get into the currency exchange engine. But before that, let's go back to the token briefly because we didn't really get into the token sale itself, right. which is ongoing at this point. So just tell our listeners a little bit about the token sale. Absolutely. And what's, where, so right you know, now is a, it's a great time to, to join our system. We have a token sale that's going on. It it finishes on October 5th. We're currently about a little bit north of 10 million raised in our first eight days of, of our crowd sales. So I definitely want to thank all my contributors and anybody who's listening for joining that as well. And currently right now we do have a 20% token bonus on top of uh, the current the current sale that it's going on right now. And that can be redeemed via email. So I definitely encourage anybody to take advantage of that if they see it and uh, jump on it while the price is low. So, all right. Um, and what your what are the the like? What's your funding goal with the token sale, and what are the, the maximum tokens? Like, if if that funding goal is reached. Sure. So originally, we when we set up the the schematics of it, it was supposed to be for 170k in ether is what the smart contract is able to hold. Um, it's an equivalent to also Bitcoin and Litecoin because we do accept those forms of payments as well. As far as U.S. dollar value wise, because of the the price increase and surge of uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. From when our ICO started, we're at a right. 30 million cap. So once we hit 30 million and equivalent to Bitcoin, Litecoin, or Ethereum, that's when the ICO will be complete. So you're you're about two thirds there. Is that, is one third, oh, no, yeah, about one third one, there right now. One third, I'm sorry, yes. one third there. So, um, and then so do you? I mean, at this rate, it, it's possible that the token sale will end before October 5th. Is I yes, mean, if, of course, if, that's what. Okay. We, as of the way it's going right now, it should be over. We have a couple of uh, large deals we're working on right now with a few companies, so we should be over by, I would say, early September. Okay. And uh, so, if you know, if people, uh, where can people go to find out more and sign up and get that sort of information? Sure, you can go to our website, uh, www.centra.tech, and you can click the, co- the token sale page as well as our white papers on there, and you can just get an insight of everything from A to Z. So now you mentioned some launching uh, dates and stuff uh, previously in, in this interview. What's like you're you're planning on this stuff being live before the end of the year? Is that right? Yes. Okay. And uh, so that's the and that right now you 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 only have licensing in 38 states, and uh, I, I'm fortunate that I'm in New Hampshire, and that's one of the states. Um, but so as far you, as the I mean, and that's a great point. The thir- the, the yeah. states that we're operating in and currently for licensing purposes is just so the ability to withdraw and and transmit your your bitcoins. Uh, as far as actually utilizing the card itself to the wallet and spending the cryptocurrencies, that's available in all states. For clients that would wish to withdraw into their bank account, as far as their their cryptocurrency, the fiat conversion. That's going to have to wait until we work out the licenses in the remaining states. But for anybody that actually wants to physically use the card and host currency on the wallet, that's available uh, worldwide. And you're going to have not just uh, hard uh, physical cards, but you're going to have virtual cards as well? Yes. Yeah, so you, you'll be able to issue the card, the virtual card right from the central wallet app. Uh, you're able to design it so that it, it uh, can be locked in case you lose the card or in case the card gets compromised as well. And that's all accessible through the app. Now I'm I'm this is going to have the same sort of know your customer uh and, and AML regulations that any any credit card is going to have is that right? I'm sorry what was the last thing you said? 
it's the, so basically the, the KYC, uh, to sign up for the card, you're going to have to basically uh, sign up like you would for a, a bank debit card or a credit card. Is that right? Yeah. So we have two levels of KYC and AML uh, verification in the app. Level one is to get you into the app as well as to get you set up. And level two is to activate your limits. So level one is just basic first name, last name, address, phone number, as well as uh, date of birth and email. And then level two is designed to get a little bit more information about you in terms of ID to make sure that we can accept all the limits and make sure everything is clear on our end. Okay. Um, so there, you know, part of the thing going on right now with uh, the cards, and we've we've uh, interviewed uh, Julian Haas, Dr. Julian Haas from the 10X card, and we've talked about token card, we've talked about Monaco, and so uh, we're getting into Centra. And part of the issue that has been surrounding the other three cards has been no U.S. access, and and then all of a sudden you come on my radar, and, and your focus has almost been U.S. access, it seems. What sort of uh, what sort of challenges did you have to overcome to make that happen? Sure, it was it was really more of a detrimental aspect of it, and, and being able to utilize some connections I made when I was in school. Uh, a lot of the aspects of getting the licensing agreement here in the United States took an, an aspect of who I knew at Metropolitan Commercial Bank, and it kind of went through. It was a kind of a friendly conversation that when I first pitched the idea to them, and they had BitPay as a client. So the door was open for that for that direction to get the licensing agreement. It was just the the technicalities of how to get the other assets involved, and that's where the central wallet came into play. Because in, in in essence, our system is connected to the bank, and we're connected to the clients. So that's why we were able to utilize their current schematic with BitPay and just co- and kind of just added an additional twist to it and added the additional seven cryptocurrencies. Yeah. So, and you're you're so you're already uh, one one difference I'm seeing for some of the other cards is that you're already expanding beyond uh, the the four basic core uh, cryptos. You know, ERC twenty Dash, Ethereum, and uh, Bitcoin. Right. So you've already added you know, Litecoin, Ripple, uh, Zcash, and Monero, which is really interesting because I mean Dash does have some privacy functions built in, but Zcash and Monero are privacy centric and focused. Right. So. Uh, like the 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 Apple uh, wallet app for Dash took forever to get approved. Right, exactly. We were waiting on that as well because uh, we were trying to see exactly when that was going to happen. We had an idea that was going to happen. It be- it became too valuable of an asset to be ignored. So I'm glad that Apple uh, came around and accepted the the terms of Dash. That definitely helped us on our final implementations to put Dash into the app as well. Cool. Yeah, that was something we were watching too. Is like because I think a lot of different uh, apps were sort of waiting for that to, to happen because they wanted to support Dash. Right. So it's good that it's finally there. Let's talk a little bit about the currency exchange engine, this uh, CCE module, yes. um, and then how how was how is that going to work out? So the CCE module is is uh, currently a patent pending system that's designed to use an off chain schematic to be able to rapidly convert your cryptocurrencies to fiat without the use of fees. Uh, Without getting much into the proprietary information of it, as a summary, it it pretty much works off the chain. It's designed to take your cryptocurrency, convert it to the fiat used at the time of purchase, and it doesn't charge you any fees, and there is no delays in block times because everything is based on off-chain schematics. Okay. So this is uh, basically this is when you use the debit card, you're actually sending fiat through the the network, Correct. and so this is how you're you're basically converting. You're not worried about converting from one coin to another coin. You're just worried about converting from one coin to fiat. Is that right? So that's of- as as far as our the debit card goes. Inside of the wallet on our public version, we're gonna have the ability to actually actually interact and change different coins together as well. That's all gonna be built into the currency conversion engine. For the debit card aspect of it, it's just going to be the rapid transaction ability of changing a cryptocurrency to fiat at time of sale without the use of the blockchain. I just want to finally ask, uh, we, we, is any of this smart contract related or is this all sort of uh, hosted by the Centra servers and whatnot? So no, it, it's, it's mainly as far as our token is concerned, it is based on the Ethereum, um, Ethereum network and the Ethereum blockchain. As far as the, uh, the currency conversion engine and as well as the, the central card, it's all hosted through our servers. Well, hey, thanks so much for joining me, Sam, and I look forward to seeing what happens next with the central card. 
I appreciate the time of being here, and I hope to speak to you soon as well. You're listening to Neo Cash Radio. Tune in to Neo Cash Radio every Wednesday for a new show, NeoCashRadio.com, where we discuss the future of money today.